you know, we do have a BACnet uh, Gateway 1.0 PDF. This is a very comprehensive document that I've gone through. It shows almost every single possible configuration details that is required. For the BACnet unit, we have 201,000 points and these are the 12 NCs. Of course, it comes in a pack where it comes with a 1501 power supply and a, and a DDK622 RX222 network interface. It's the same for both. Okay, and the power supply is, um, of course, a Dunlop power supply as well. Okay, so these are the images of how it would look like. So typically, the connections are very straightforward out of the box from Tridium. Just note that Dynalite has already programmed a uh, Dynet driver into the Chase unit so that communication between the BACnet and Dynet can be established. Of course, we do not support any so many um, Dynet opcodes yet, um, just the basic that is required mainly for monitoring purpose on the BMS side, which is typical. In most cases, we'll be using the primary Ethernet LAN port to first configure the JACE unit. Thereafter, the IT guys or BMS guy would reuse this port as a form of communication. Okay, 232 is the way we plug in our PC node, power supply. Um, there are a few topologies that we can consider. One is usually a um, direct RS-485 spur connection that requires a BACnet. There are cases where user requires to uh, install one BACnet unit on each spur trunk topology. So meaning if I have six levels, I will have six BACnet units. That's okay. Um, it might be even easier and, uh, you know, in a way, slightly cost effective uh, through their end and through ours. Okay, so this is a typical layout. You got your commission and PC going to the switch which you can communicate with the JS unit. Okay, and of course the switch connected to the BACnet IBMS site. And the JS unit has RS232 connected to your spur or dynamic network and, and your 1501 power supply powers up the JS unit. Second topology would be having uh, Envision gateways. So because Envision Gateway has only one LAN port, but it, it, it allows multiple points of connections. So, you know, multiple people can connect directly. And the topology is roughly the same, uh, power supply in, network gateway, and to dynamic. And with that Envision Gateway, of course, you understand that we can have offsets as well. Not that the topology above doesn't allow us to, it still allow us to have chunk and spur topology, but we'll be using probably RS-485, DDNG-485. Um, gateways as the trunk and spur topology. So the points that we currently support or we can call it opcodes that Dynet can support are currently this. Okay, note that there's a read-write status to each of the points meaning that for preset control, channel level control and HVAC control we can do a read, we can do a write meaning that BMS are able to send uh, scene settings and update on the Dynet network and vice versa. Okay. Light level and Dali Balas are not two-way communication, it's only a read from the BMS side. So what they do is they'll just request what's my value and then we uh, we'll provide them on you know the current lux level of this particular area or this particular sensor is so many lux and probably a balas status, you know, balas offline, you know, lamp failure and so on and so forth. Okay. Gateway IP address. Okay, the very first step to note is this. When we open up the cover of the JACE unit, the Vicron Tridium Niagara JACE unit, there's a serial number tag. This serial number is very important. Um, for example, in this uh, highlighted example, serial number is 123456. So the IP address that will be um, um, configured by Flip Steinlight uh, from the factory is actually 192.168.1.126 taking note that the last digit is the critical digit um, to represent its uh, IP address. In my case, snapshot 1, uh, um, my serial number is 470443. So the IP address of this JS unit will be 192.168.1.123. Okay. So now, um, as you know, we have to, to first communicate with the JSON unit or make changes to the JSON unit, we have to use a web browser. But we need to be in the same um, IP address range. We already know the IP address of the JSON unit. We can easily set up our PC, the 
network connections look at area network right click going to its properties of course Windows 7 should be IP4 uh, TCP IP v4 mine is still on XP we can change the IP address of course the last octet has to be you know different from the JC unit it cannot be 123 because you will not be able to communicate okay with that set up click OK and OK we will have a connection between now uh, my PC and the JC unit through a LAN cable okay this allows us to so-called remote access into the JC unit to do basic configurations if there's in any case if there's a point of time where IT guys recommend a change of IP address it is possible um, then we need to change the IP address to suit it could it could be original as we say it could be 192.168.123 but the IT, IT might give you a, a, a set of IP address that says no you know do do this octet range between 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to 255 okay so we can actually give we can actually change it and the um, change the IP address easily okay but changing of IP address cannot be done through uh, remote access through the web browser of the JS unit but actually through a third party software program called PuTTY this can be downloaded uh, free online and just by following this step by step procedure um, um, you are able to change this IP address fairly easily probably in, 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 in a minute or so but take note of this, this is very important, take off the cover power down the unit there's a jumper wire by default it's in a normal operation but if we need to change the IP address or to update the drivers we, we need to change it into the serial shell uh, position okay which will be vertical and by, by default it's horizontal on uh, normal operation okay